Hello fellow imagers, today we are going to look at meridian flips and how to set them up and manage them in Voyager. So before we talk about setting one up, what is a meridian flip? If you use a German equatorial mount, your mount cannot track continuously from the east horizon, past the meridian, and all the way to the west horizon. Most equatorial mounts can track for some time past the meridian, maybe as little as 20 or 30 minutes, or even as much as a couple of hours. You have to know how far your mount can track past the meridian, so if you don't, you'll need to check your manual and do a physical check because everyone's setup is different. If you track too far, your optical tube or your camera may hit the tripod or pier. This is known as a pier crash and you don't want one of those. To avoid a pier crash, your mount has to do a flip in which the orientation of the mount and scope change. During this flip, the mount slews the scope to a new position. So Voyager has to know this is happening and stop shooting pictures until after the flip. Here's an example of a German equatorial mount pointing at opposite sides of the meridian before and after a meridian flip. In the first image, we say the mount is west of the pier and the scope is pointing east. This is how a German equatorial mount looks when you're tracking an object prior to the meridian. In the second image, the mount is on the east side of the pier and the scope is pointing west. The scope is tracking an object after the meridian. In shorthand, we say the mount is west of the pier for the left-hand image and east of pier for the right-hand image. You may be thinking, but the mount is kind of in the middle in both pictures. Yes, but think about where the part of the mount that holds the scope is. That's the part that's either east of pier or west of pier. Since we have to stop shooting images during the meridian flip, we recommend letting Voyager manage the flip. Make sure your mount software is not trying to do the meridian flip too or you'll have problems. You tell Voyager how far past the meridian it should track before beginning the flip process. The default is 10 minutes. You can also instruct Voyager to either finish the running exposure when the 10 minute time is hit or abort the exposure and do the flip. Let's watch what happens during meridian flip and then we'll show how to set it up in Voyager. This is Voyager's on the fly panel. We're running a sequence and at this point the scope is pointing east so we would call this Pier West and we have not yet reached the meridian. If you look in the upper right you will see two areas that we focus on before, during, and after the meridian flip to make sure things are working okay. The first area is the data acquisition panel and the second is the operations panel. And in the data acquisition panel you can see pier is west and as we just mentioned that's what things look like when the scope is pointing east. In the operations panel we have a green LED on track so we know the scope is currently tracking and we have no other LEDs lit. Now we move ahead to a point where the mount has passed the meridian. We see an orange light flashing under meridian flip under the operations panel. We have not yet done the meridian flip but at this point Voyager recognizes that the mount is past the meridian and the flip will happen once we go past the point at which the number of minutes past the meridian to flip has been reached and the current exposure is done unless we have told Voyager to abort the current exposure. You can also see that the expose LED is green which indicates an exposure is currently in process. Also notice the pier is still west so we have not yet done a meridian flip even though we are currently tracking a little bit past the meridian. This will continue for a number of minutes so I'm going to fast forward to the point at which the meridian flip begins. Alright, the current exposure is wrapping up. Watch the green LED next to the exposed light. It will go off in a moment and the meridian flip light will turn, on, turn blue which is an indication that Voyager is beginning the actual meridian flip. We see that the exposed light is now orange and it's gone out and the meridian flip is still blinking orange while the exposure is being downloaded. Now we have a slew green LED indicating the scope is moving and a blue blinking meridian flip LED which indicates Voyager is performing the meridian flip.
And the Meridian flip is wrapping up and we will see the blue LED go out in a second indicating the flip is finished. There it is. It's now green indicating that the Meridian flip has occurred in the past. If you look at the pier indication it is east indicating the scope is now east of pier pointing west. And the green expose LED has come on. We are now continuing the sequence with the next exposure. Now let's take a look at the key events that happen between the time your scope crosses the meridian and the meridian flip finishes. I'm calling the time of these events T0, T1, T2, and T3. These are generic labels for illustrative purposes only. Please note these are not the descriptive names used in Voyager setup, so don't look for them there. Before setting up the meridian flip in Voyager, you need to know two numbers that are specific to your equipment. First, you need to know at what point your equipment would hit your pier we're calling that T3 in this diagram. You never want to allow the scope to track even close to this number. A buffer of at least 10 minutes is recommended and more is a good idea. Second, you should know what your longest exposure time will be. If it's greater than T3, the time to appear crash, you will need to select the option to have Voyager abort the current exposure once we cross the meridian and have Voyager perform the flip. In most cases, you'll have enough time to finish the current exposure and then do the flip at time T2 or less, depending on how much of the exposure was complete at time T1. For T1, we'll pick some small number greater than zero. This is the earliest time past the meridian where Voyager will do the flip. We're calling it flip ASAP or as soon as possible in this diagram because this is the time we put Voyager on alert to do the flip when the current exposure is finished or aborted if we chose that option. Voyager's default value for T1 is 10 minutes, which works in many cases. Let's take a look at an actual example. In this example, we determine that our scope will hit the pier at 30 minutes past the meridian. Our longest exposure is 10 minutes. A quick check tells us that even if Voyager has just started a new exposure right before the 10 minute flip ASAP point is reached, we'll still have a 10 minute buffer between the latest time the Voyager will do a pier flip and T3, the pier crash point. Now let's look at Voyager and see how we set all this up. We are in Voyager with the setup screen selected and in the setup form we want to be on the mount tab. This is where the Gem Meridian Flip Manager settings are. Depending on your choice of mount, the ASCOM Pier Mode will either be grayed out or open for you to select. In this case I've chosen the Sky X to control my mount. The Sky 6 would give the same result from scope position means that Voyager will look at the position reported by your mount and use that to determine where your mount is actually pointing. So it will be important to make sure the position returned is reasonably accurate. If you are using an ASCOM driver and you pick ASCOM telescope, then you'll have the ASCOM normal or ASCOM inverted options. ASCOM normal means that when your scope says the mount is west and pointing east, that is exactly the way it is. ASCOM inverted will flip those settings. So if your scope reports that it is actually pointing east when it's pointing west, you want to pick inverted here. There is some information in the wiki on how to test for this and we will give a reference to the wiki at the end of the setup instructions. For now, I'll go back to the Sky X setting which I'm using for the rest of this demo. The next setting is meridian cross delay by mount and this is only if you have an astrophysics mount. There's also discussion of this in the wiki, but in astrophysics bounce, you can say how long you need to wait after crossing the meridian before doing a flip. And this setting should match the setting in your astrophysics mount setting. Otherwise, if Voyager says do the flip and this number is smaller than the number in your astrophysics mount software, then your mount will ignore the flip command and the flip will not happen. So it's very important to have this set properly if you're running an AP mount. Next we have the only exposure action before meridian crossing value. In normal operation, Voyager may slew your mount to find a focus star or to correct a guiding error. When you're close to the meridian, these slews could trigger an unwanted meridian flip. To avoid that, you can tell Voyager with this setting the number of minutes prior to the meridian during which Voyager should not perform slews for these reasons. Voyager will continue running your sequence and taking exposures during this period. It will just delay any non-emergency reason to slew the mount. If a slew is needed for an emergency situation, such as a go-to for target realignment, 
Voyager will suspend running your sequence until after the Meridian flip. The next setting, do flip after mount passing Meridian by, is the value we called T1 in the earlier slide. It's the flip as soon as possible number. When the mount is past the Meridian by this number of minutes, Voyager will either abort the current exposure and perform the flip, or finish the current exposure and then do the flip. The settings to determine whether to abort or continue the exposure are in the sequence setup, which we'll review in a minute. The final setting here is the ASCOM read LST, or local sidereal time, from the driver. If this box is checked, Voyager will use the local sidereal time reported by your ASCOM mount driver instead of the local PC time. Most drivers synchronize their time with the PC time. Older drivers might not do this, and the meridian flip time calculated by Voyager could differ from the time calculated by your mount. You can usually check your mount's time in its software and see if it's synced with your PC time. If you're not sure, please check this flag so Voyager and your mount are using the same LST value. Before we leave the setup tab, one last setting worth looking at relative to meridian flip is in the safety area. Here you see gem stop tracking for inactivity if meridian flip is needed. It's a good idea to check this box because in that case Voyager will stop your mount from tracking if nothing's happening and it notices a meridian flip is required. So this is another way to prevent a possible peer crash. So now let's take a look at meridian flip management inside of your sequence themselves. And for that, we'll move over to the on the fly tab of Voyager and we'll bring up a sequence definition and we will go to the Meridian Flip tab. These are the options related to your Meridian Flip inside of Voyager. The first setting on the Meridian Flip tab is Meridian Flip Mode. You can choose from Do Not Manage, in which case your mount itself has to do the flip. Manage, in which case Voyager will manage the flip. Or Halt on Flip Time, in which case the sequence will be suspended when it's time to do a Meridian Flip for your mount. Note, Voyager will not halt the mount at this time unless you have instructed it to do so in the safety section of the mount setup. That box we just reviewed, check the box, gem stop tracking for inactivity if meridian flip is needed. Let's put this back on manage and we want Voyager to be managing our meridian flips. The next two settings tell Voyager things to do after a meridian flip. The first is flip rotator on meridian flip. If you check this box and you have a rotator, after the meridian flip is finished, Forager will flip your rotator by 180 degrees. This can be useful, especially if you have an off-axis guider and you need to rotate to find the guide star. Inject focus on meridian flip tells Voyager, do an autofocus routine after the meridian flip is finished. This is helpful if your focus might have changed slightly due to the mechanical movement of the meridian flip. Next we have force meridian flip procedure with exposure abort after meridian crossing. If you check this, Voyager will abort any exposure in progress and do the flip when the max wait time number of minutes over here has elapsed since the meridian crossing. And this could be an extra safety measure, a number smaller than the peer crash time, but greater than the do flip after mount crossing meridian number, the one we call T1 in our generic timeline. The final value here is abort exposure if meridian flip occurs outside Voyager and force execute meridian flip options. If you check this box and Voyager notices an external meridian flip occurring, it will abort the current exposure and then when the external flip completes, it'll do any options like rotating the camera or performing the autofocus. This only works if mount control is via ASCOM. The ASCOM peer mode setting is either ASCOM normal or ASCOM inverted and meridian flip mode setting is manage. There's also a research and survey dialog and if you look at that you'll see it has a meridian flip tab with exactly the same settings as on the sequence tab. And those are all the settings pertaining to meridian flips. And before leaving this video let me remind you that most of the information we've covered here is in the wiki so it's a good online reference. You go to voyagerastro.com, you go down to the wiki on the help menu. That will bring you to the main page of the wiki. The setup information over on the left here, you see setup and mount. And on the mount page, if you go to Gem Meridian Flip Manager, 
there's all the instructions on that part of the setup tab and you'll see several important notices, more detailed information about each of the individual settings. So that's a good place to check if you have any setup questions. And then the information about Meridian Flip in the sequence. If you go to Documentation and Sequences, and then the Meridian Flip tab, here's all the settings in the Meridian Flip tab, explanations, and some additional important notes. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, be sure to ask for help on the forum or send us an email. And we hope you enjoy reliable automated imaging with Voyager. <laughs>